Substitution here. Give me my analogy. What did we say yesterday? What is substitution? Or give me a new analogy. What did we use? You replace something with something else. So like what? What did we talk about before we ever started the lesson? Basketball, music, right? Substitution. You take something out, you put something of equal value in, okay? All right, so these first examples that we're going to do aren't going to ask you what is the solution. Um, I mean, they are, but more specifically, how many solutions? So remember when we did graphing, there was infinitely many is if they were what? When you graph and there's infinitely many solutions, why was that? The same line, right? If there was no solution, what was true? They were parallel, okay? So that's what we're going to do today, but instead of using graphing, we're going to use substitution, okay? So you're going to figure out, does it have no solution? Does it have one solution? Or does it have infinitely many solutions, okay? So here is the setup. Let's say you have this equation and this equation. Okay. Um, solving by substitution, what's our first step? Isolate. Is a variable isolated right now? Is a variable by itself on one side? Yeah. Oh, X. X, right? X is by itself. So we are going to use that X equals as our something we're going to substitute. So we're going to substitute this in place of the X in our next equation. So it's going to be... 3.5 times negative 2y plus 4. Okay, so right now we've done this in our equation. You need to finish off that equation. So we're going to go plus 7y equals 14. Okay. What do I do? Distribute. Okay, so 3.5 times negative 2 is a negative 7y. 3.5 times 4 is a positive 14 plus 7y equals 14. From here, it's algebra. It's the simplifying of your setup. Ella, are you with me back there? Um, so negative 7 plus 7, we're going to combine. Now, here's the deal. I feel like a lot of people, when the y's or the variables are on the same side, they still try to move it over by doing the opposite. So they add 7y and add 7y like this. Don't do this. This is wrong. Okay? I feel like that's what people try to do. But keep in mind, you're on the same side of the equal sign still. So you don't do that. Instead, you just combine your like terms. So it's going to be negative 7y plus 7y. What is that? Zero. It's gone, right? Our y's are no longer. So this cancels itself out, and you're left with, right, 14 equals 14. That means no matter what number you plug in, you will always get 14 equals 14. The same number equals the same number. When you get this set up, that's called an identity, this is infinitely many solutions. Okay? No matter what number you plug in, you will get an equation that works out. Okay? That means infinitely many solutions. Any number could be an answer. Okay? So that's one type of problem that's new. The other one that's new is this. If I tell you y equals 3x minus 11, and y minus 3x equals negative 13, and we say solve it, okay? First question, is something isolated? Uh, yes. 
what? The top y. The top y, right? This y equals 3x minus 11. So what we're going to do is we're going to take that and replace the y in the next equation. So it's going to be 3x minus 11. And then we jump back up to here. Minus 3x equals negative 13. What is 3x minus 3x? Zero. It's gone, right? The 3x's cancel each other out. So we're left with negative 11 on the left equals negative 13 on the right. Is that a true statement? No. No. So because those are not equal, no there is no solution. Um, no, because like yesterday they didn't, right? Today they do sometimes, but not always. Um, so you just have to, you just have to do the substitution process and see what you end up with. If you end up with this, no solution. If you end up with this, that's infinitely many. If you end up with this, you're going to get one solution, right? You plug in your x for two and then get your y, and that point is your one answer, okay? Questions on no solution versus infinitely many? Do we get that? Okay, so let's say we solved, and your answer came out to negative 42 equals 42. What would your answer be? No solution. It's false, right? This would be no solution. What if I said x equals 2 and y equals 7? One solution. That is your answer, 2, 7, right? What if it came out to 43 equals 44? No solution, right? That's false. What if it came out to 16 equals 16? How many? Infinitely many. Okay, so just get comfortable with that. Whenever you see they don't equal each other, no solution. Whenever you see they are the same numbers, infinitely many, whenever you keep your variables, x equals and y equals, then there's one answer, okay? Okay, we're gonna do three substitution problems just for some extra practice and then we'll be done. All right, um, get out a piece of scratch paper and your pencil because I'm not just gonna walk you through them, I'm gonna give you some time and then you'll kinda walk me through them. Um, so do these, this is your first one, x equals y and x plus two y equals three. Forgot to start recording again. Okay, um, second problem. You have one equation that is y equals 2x minus 10. Another equation that is 2y equals x minus 8. Okay? Question. Do you have an isolated variable? You do. Which one? The y. Okay? We know what y equals, so we're going to replace our y with what y equals, right? This is going to go here. So we're going to say 2 times 2x minus 10, and then we pick back up writing this equation, equals x minus 8, right? So now our only variable is x, which is what we're shooting for, one variable, okay? Ella, this is hard. You need to do this with me. Um, so you're going to distribute this 4x minus 20 equals x minus 8. What do I do next here? You add yep, we're going to move the x over to the 4x. So we're going to subtract it because it's on the opposite side. Okay, so you get 3x minus 20 equals negative 8. Don't forget that negative. Then what? 
plus 20. You're going to add the 20 to both sides. Okay, so you get 3x equals, this is gone, negative 8 plus 20 is 12. Then you're going to divide by 3. So x is 4. Now if I know x is 4, how do I find y? So proud of you right now, Ryan. Um, you're going to move this x up here because we know y equals 2x minus 10. So y equals 2 times 4 minus 10. So y equals 8 minus 10, which is negative 2. Okay? So x and y is x and y. And that is your answer. Okay? How does the bell ring? 20. Okay. Um, last one. This one is 2, oops, no, 2y, not 2x. 2y equals x plus 1, and negative 2x minus y equals 7. Okay, this is our hardest one. Is something isolated? No. How can we isolate something right now? Not divide. Which one do you think is the easiest to isolate? The x, the y? It's the x. The reason the y is not, you could do the y. The, the only reason y is a little bit more complex is it's a negative y, right? Um, so you'd have to get rid of the negative too, negative also. Um, so instead, I'm going to take this one, and I'm going to solve for x. So I'm going to subtract 1 from both sides. So I get x equals... 2y minus 1. Because you were screwing around over there. Um, so yeah, just take the 1 away from both sides. You get this. Now we're going to substitute. So this value, 2y minus 1, is going to go where? What does it replace? What does it substitute for? the x, right? So we're going to take that, we're going to take this, and we're going to bring it here, okay? So it's going to be negative 2 times 2y minus 1, and then we pick back up here, minus y equals 7, okay? Now you solve. So distribute this, negative 4y, Negative 2 times negative 1 is a positive 2 minus y equals 7. Okay, keep simplifying. Negative 4y minus y is what? Negative 5y plus 2 right, because this is a 1y, negative 1y, so negative 4 minus 1 is negative 5. Then we're going to take away the 2, so negative 5y equals 5, and then we're going to divide by negative 5. So y is negative 1. How do I find x? How do I figure out what x is if y is negative 1? Okay, I'll just tell you because the bell rang. You were going to plug it in right there. So x equals 2 times negative 1 minus 1. So negative 2 minus 1. So negative 3. Okay, so your answer would be negative 3, negative 1. All right. Have a lovely weekend.